the the AFI network is very helpful in the sense that it will lay for us a foundation within which we could work from country to country. So what we will take out of it will vary from uh, our experiences and the extent to which we would have liberalized our laws, the extent to which the prohibitions or the limitations exist. So I think when you have a, a network that gives you advice, experiences, it is better than you know trying to go it alone because you can only share from other uh, member countries' experiences what steps they have taken to um, better their situations, where they had uh, barriers, uh, what, what were the lessons learned. So I think the AFI network provides that forum for us to exchange ideas, for us to learn from other countries and to see how we could then tailor make our own solution. So I think it is a, a, a very good forum for us to learn from and for us to share with others our own experiences. So the Women's Financial Inclusion uh, Committee of AFI has been set up to really try and coordinate the efforts that we are all doing at national level to see how we can intensify the, the work that is being done at the national level. And like I've already indicated, it's for us to be able to share experiences, to be able to learn from each other and perhaps also to, to get information at like technical level from one country to the next. So we do hope that the committee can assist us to set up structures within our respective countries. You know, like I'm saying, we, we would have uh, some women's groups already in existence, but I think what is lacking is the umbrella bodies that bring them together so that even when we can get AFI or the Women's Financial Inclusion uh, uh, Committee to bring workshops to Lesotho, we would know who to reach out to. So the idea is that uh, the Financial Inclusion Committee would help us set up structures, would help set up programs that can be monitored and that can then lead to the work uh, filtering through to, to the rural areas where we find the biggest gaps in terms of uh, inaccessibility of finance. So we would have to have structured programs that we can report upon uh, on a periodic process. Pro uh, we would report progress on a periodic basis. And then of course, some of the things that uh, the committee has been trying to work on is just the lack of data that is available. What kind of data do we work with on women? Do we know where these women are? Why are they not able to access finance? What kind of uh, limitations do they, the women themselves, raise as uh, prohibitions for, him, for them to access finance? So we have to be able to get the data out of our financial uh, service providers to see what it is that they have. And from that, then we can be able to determine policy in terms of how to take the financial inclusion uh, strategy forward. I think in many of our countries, we are overcoming the legal barriers. We are engaging in processes where financial literacy is made uh, accessible so that in the, if I take the specific example of Lesotho, we have embarked on a program whereby we have engaged our Ministry of Finance, our Ministry of Education. We have engaged the financial sector itself in an effort to 
uh, roll out a program of financial literacy. Now, with the Minister of Education, we are trying to request that financial literacy programs, specific programs, you know, educational programs, be part of the school curricula so that we can get the children from a very early age to start learning about financial products. You know, they can start with simple uh, products so that as they grow older, then they can be able to access uh, finance much easier. What we do find is that the women tend generally to form themselves into small groups. Those would be savings groups. And they tend to just save, you know, for payment of school fees, for payment of, you know, small bur burial uh, expenses. Those are the kinds of things that women generally uh, use their finance for. This ability they have of saving can be grown or can grow into bigger investment uh, schemes such that those investments can then be used somehow for small uh, industries within the rural areas where they live so that they can create employment. They can even create the avenue for, for you know, just uh, markets around uh, where they live. They, they would be able to access um, produce, you know, if they are encouraged to farm and then produce in a way that is going to be commercial, even small scale commercial farming. And also uh, those investments, they can even go into some other agro industry. So we have to move our women uh, away from just pure savings for payment of school fees, for payment of burial expenses, and grow them into uh, uh, units where they can, they can be a bit more productive so that the income can, can be used productively instead of just being consumed, really. So that's what we are trying to do now.